I'm, I'm veering from the title of uh, the talk just to talk about our uh, HIPEC program here at Edward Hospital. Uh, been here a little over two years. And uh, the Kool-Aid came up, uh, thinking about the, uh, outside the box came up. I was walking in Utah a few summers ago and I saw this behind a, a window in a store. And I took a photo of it and I think it says, confidence is the feeling you have before you fully understand the situation. And I thought this applies to our uh, HIPEC program, any HIPEC program, that we feel strongly about it, we still don't fully understand it, but we're confident that it's helping uh, and has helped and continues to help uh, many patients. Uh, my data I summarized in one slide, so we don't bore uh, not the patients and uh, other people, but uh, basically this is in colorectal cancers. Um, it has been alluded that there is one randomized uh, trial from the Netherlands by Dr. Vic Verwal. There are two um, uh, internal controls. They all show a benefit. The upper curve is for the HIPEC arm versus the systemic arm or the stand standard arm at that time. Um, if we take multiple publications and summarize the data over, uh, over a decade or so, many years, uh, systemic therapy alone, five-year survival, 6%, they range from 0 to 22. For the HIPEC arm, five-year survives, 42%. If you take 1,000 patients, 1,955 patients, one year, two years, three years, you see that the HIPEC side, there's nothing randomized here, but have shown improved survival. And the comparison to liver resection came up uh, with Dr. Hantel's talk that it is standard, we accept it, people do it. And in studies that have overlapped uh, experiences with liver resection and HIPEC uh, patients, the, the curves overlap. And so another uh, uh, point, um, confidence measure to say, no, we should ex uh, explore possible site reduction with HIPIC for those patients. So I have a plea, always have had that plea, that patients uh, with pertinent surface malignancy should not be condemned to death. And I've had this quotation from Dr. Sugarbaker in one of his public many years ago, I don't know which one, he wrote that the therapeutic nihilism that has dominated the care of patients with peritoneal carcinomatosis may not be appropriate. Um, at Edward here, again, uh, a little over two years, we've uh, amassed a commitment of surgical team and institution. I mean, we have the backing of the institution for excellence um, and for a peritoneal surface malignancy program. So we, we, it's not just go ahead, do, be a good surgeon, but yeah, develop the program, make it top uh, a destination for uh, many patients from outside and within the area. I'm dedicated to it. We, my new partner, Dr. Sheikh, joined us recently. Hopefully, he will pick it up uh, with me in the near future. We've tried to educate uh, other MDs, our medical oncologists. Um, we had dinner with them, Dr. or a few of them. Dr. Sugarbaker was impressed that uh, they, are, they seem to be on board. There are skeptics, certainly, but <laughs> they are on board. They should be skeptical because and we've educated nurses and ciliary staff. We've standardized IP chemotherapy uh, protocols that are uh, directly in our EPIC uh, medical records. And certainly knowledgeable selection of patients for treatment. And we've had clinical pathways for the support staff. Uh, that made the program here, I think, very successful and uh, safe, low, low complications, and uh, patients are very satisfied. We have many patients uh, sitting here that can attest to it. Of course, we've been involved with Team Keith, uh, pub crawl, um, and uh, the symposium here, uh, how many times? Three times, Kim? Three. Three? Yeah. Thanks for the donation. In our data, we have a data registry. Uh, almost everybody signed uh, the clinical protocol, and it's about 80 patients. Uh, one third, one third are colon appendix that uh, is, are the most common uh, applications for this. We've had ovarian patients 15%. Sarcoma is big for us. 11% uh, of the patients that have been sarcoma, which I think is a good number. And others, 9%, includes 
uh, liver uh, with peritoneal meds two years out doing well, uh, a, a primary uterus that's not a sarcoma, and some of those rare esoteric uh, that we thought outside the box that may be candidates for this procedure. And, um, and we've done laparoscopic hypic, Patricia is sitting here. Uh, that's not you on the inside, I took that from the internet. Uh, <laughs> but that's you on the outside. <laughs> Uh, she was our first laparoscopic high pick uh, back in March, I believe, correct? Yeah. So we're trying to push the envelope as much as possible with uh, being, uh, do, uh, pro providing everything for our patients. And we've mentioned sarcomatosis. Dr. Ndivia here deals with uh, sarcoma patients a lot. Sarcomatosis, like carcinomatosis, but sarcoma metastatic to the metastasis, particularly to the omentum or peritoneal surfaces. And that is bulky tumor metast uh, metastasis from a sarcoma. And uh, I mean, this patient, this is his sarcoma. A few years ago, that was in the pelvis. It ruptured, had a hole. We see that sometimes with the appendix and, and spews. I like the term exfoliation that Dr. Sugar Baker talked about and spreads throughout uh, the tumor cells and mucus and they start you know, sticking to the surfaces. Uh, and in our uh, program today, uh, one of our patients, uh, uh, George Capley, I will not be able to make uh, the trip, so I thought I'll bring up his uh, slide. Um, I met him in um, May 07. Um, he had presented with abdominal distension, abdominal pain. Uh, at that time, lived in Michigan, uh, St. Joe, Michigan. Um, he sought medical attention at many institutions, including high-end academic institutions, was told nothing to do or don't come see us because there is nothing to do. Finally came our way uh, and had had a myxoid sarcoma. And you'll see a, f a fluid, this is the liver fluid around it, so mental caking, stuff in the pelvis around the bowels. And uh, in May 07, uh, he had the site reduction with HIPEC, used two drugs, cisplatin and doxorubicin. Again, his final pathology is myxoid sarcoma, and he remains disease-free more than eight years uh, into it from the time he has not had uh, any hope until now. Uh, he couldn't make it today because he's selling his second, he sold his first company in, uh, that I know of, at least in uh, San Joe, and moved to Florida. Now he's selling a second company this week, so he couldn't make it, unfortunately, to give his experience. Um, I want to talk about sarcoma. I know um, this is a veering off from the PMP. It's just because we deal with it. Uh, and from the literature, from 1999 to 2010, at least the initial publications, uh, this group is from Dr. Sugar Baker with Berthet in 1999 uh, till 2010. Different chemo regimen used, follow-ups, scattering here and there, survivals are listed here. And if we see in a 10-year period, there were 167 patients only reported with sarcomatosis during that period that had the HIPEC procedure, not just site reduction, but used some uh, form of heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy. And many of them had GIST, which is the gastrointestinal trauma tumor that we know there is good medical uh, options for them with Gleevec being the first line and there are second and third lines now. So if you take out those 58 just patient. So in 10 years, there were 110 patients. So that's worldwide. That's 10 a year. That's it. They reported. So we, we published the first paper with only 13 patients at that time to add to that uh, literature. And Dr. Ndivia is uh, part of this uh, publication. That's be before I came here. And we saw that the PCI, which is the peritoneal carcinomatosis, maybe we should call it sarcomatosis index, of uh, less than 10. So low volume and those patients who have a complete cytoreduction, CC0, not even CC1, CC0 uh, have the best uh, survival. And the first patient was done before George Kaplia. George Kaplia was actually the second patient. So March 07 to May 2015, we've had 21 patients with the sarcomatosis that had undergone cytoreduction with HIPEC. Cisplatin, doxorubicin is my... Uh, combination choice for these patients. 
Most of them were leiomyosarcomas. We've had pleomorphic uterine too, desmoplastic small round cell tumor, leiomyosarcoma. You see the uh, distribution here, but liposarcomas uh, are the most. And we, I mean, there is a, you see in disease-free survival, that means until recurrence, there is a flattening at one point, which is good. I just put raw numbers here without putting them together with uh, 22 months uh, uh, mean uh, disease-free survival. The overall survival of those patients is 48 months, at least in our experience. Many of those patients have no other option. These are taking all comers, those who were resected completely and could not help as much. And you see some flattening out. This is 40, 60. That's five years here that uh, we're talking about with this follow-up. And the PCI, certainly, look, you, you have a high PCI. The curve is, unfortunately, downward. You have a lower volume PCI at 60 months, five years. You can get to that point. Uh, completeness of site reduction, same thing. Incomplete site reduction versus complete site. I mean, these are striking differences. Uh, where it, the survival, you should not even try those patients with high, uh, if you cannot uh, do the site reduction. Grade, our initial publication showed that grade did not have a difference, but now the lower grade ones are uh, separating and there is an influence on disease-free survival and the primary and recurrent. So if we catch them primary, which is something new in our initial present uh, publication, we. We thought it didn't make a difference, but obviously it is making a difference if somebody presents with sarcomatosis as a primary uh, presentation versus a recurrence, that the curves are w completely wide apart. Liposarcoma tends to do better than others also. Same thing with overall survival. So we'll go, just go through them. So grade, primary versus recurrent, you see the same spread Liposarcoma versus other, not really. I mean, the, the num but you still have 60 months and more survival. And on multivariate analysis, you want to see taking all factors, what's good, what's bad. Completeness of site reduction is significant, so you have to achieve the completeness of site reduction. Um, and um, and PCI uh, did not come out. It's approach 0.69 but at least, at least in our 21 patients now, you have to get the achieve, to achieve uh, complete cyto reduction. George Kapley wrote me this in May 2015 after his surgery. Our birthdays are close in June together. So that was an actual birthday card, and he wrote down here, his wife also signed it, thank you for the hope. And that was more than eight years ago, and he still lives with the hope, and with this I will conclude.